Hey guys, let's make Among Us cake pops. Welcome back to Lima Bean Living, or if you guys are new here and just happen to love Among Us and are stumbling upon my channel for the first time, hello, welcome. My name is Emily. Welcome to my little motherhood channel where I take care of all things mom. And in this kind of case, it's kind of all things aunt too. My niece's birthday is tomorrow actually, and I volunteered to make her some birthday treat of some sort and we kind of settled on cake pops. So I was just gonna do like a basic cake pop that we've all seen before with like a swirly green coating. My niece wanted chocolate cake. And when I do cake pops, I kind of do box cakes. I don't make a homemade cake uh, in some sense. So I made this chocolate cake for the cake pops, but I was like, the idea came to me, let's make Among Us cake pops because our whole family, including their family, like loves Among Us and I just thought it would be the perfect thing to do. So hopefully they'll turn out okay. I haven't seen anyone make Among Us cake pops before, so I'm just doing this based off of my own little ideas and hopefully it works out. Now for my niece, I did want her to have like the option of a cake pop or an actual like cake. So I went ahead and made my little nine by 13 cake back here, which will be crumbled up soon. But I also printed out a little Among Us character, not only for inspiration, but I'm gonna make her a little mini like two layer cake using this as my stencil. So I, I hope I didn't make this too small, but I do want to have obviously enough dough for all the other cake pops. So she'll get both kind of textures of this to cake, regular cake, and then a cake pop. So I'm hoping that she really likes her dessert and I'm excited to have you guys here kind of witnessing how it all goes for me. So before I go ahead and cut into this cake, I also want to show you guys like my little sketches of how I envision assembling these cake pops. I will be using mini marshmallows to help with some of the decoration. And so I'm trying to get it to scale before I start squishing dough around and forming a mold. I'd really like it to be like as uniform as possible. So having a little plan of attack is hopefully gonna help me achieve that. So I've got my cake here and I've got my little stencil and I kind of want to use like this portion of the cake, which is the tallest portion so that I can then cut it in half and have a nice little mini two layer cake for her. And I think what will help me is if I just put kind of toothpicks around here and kind of map out where I want to cut, but just a little bit away from my mold in case anything crumbles off and I need to trim it down at all. So placing in the toothpicks like this also kind of helps me to start to cut the cake so that I actually can keep it in the stenciled form. So obviously, you know, cutting out and making a two layer cake is not necessary by any means, but it is something that I wanted to give a try, just kind of to have two different types of Among Us themed things for you guys to watch, but also for my niece. I do wanna mention that cooking in a nine by 13 pan seems to be like the best pan if you wanted to make a very large Among Us character. I could see trimming off kind of this part that is a lower, I don't know if you guys can really see the how it raises, but trimming off this lower part, and that kind of gives you that rounded rectangle that we see here, and then you could just cut up just a little bit to make the legs, and you know, kind of, if you wanted to put this little face mask more towards the center, you could do that. and. That would just really make a really easy and cute Among Us character cake if you didn't wanna do cake pops or do a little mini version like I'm doing here. But now I'm just gonna to try to wiggle these toothpicks kind of to each other back and forth and cut out this little image that I've pushed these around. I'm also sure that someday, and maybe they already have one already, but they'll probably make a little like cookie cutter cutout of an Among Us character. So you may not have to even do this by the time that you're watching it. All right, I think I've done a good enough job. So I'm gonna take out my little toothpicks and then just using a spatula, I'm just gonna scrape out this guy. And it's not a big deal if I totally mess up the cake around it because it is just gonna be crumbled up anyways. So because the cake is still a little warm and I'd really like to be able to slice this in half, I'm actually gonna wrap it up in some saran wrap and then freeze it. And hopefully that will make slicing this in half a little bit easier later on. Okay, so I got this wrapped up in the saran wrap. 
Unfortunately, this guy took off some of the cake, but that's okay. We're covering it up in frosting anyways. So now that we have my little portion cut out, what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna keep it in the pan and dump in most of this chocolate fudge frosting. I am going to save just a little bit for that little cake. If I was just making cake pops, I would just pour this whole thing on top of this cake and then mix it up with a hand mixer. So I'm just gonna reserve, like I said, just a little bit so that I can frost a middle layer of that cake and then a top layer. So I've got clean hands. I have my plan for how I want these guys to turn out. I'm gonna put a piece of parchment paper over top, got my little cookie scoop, and I'm gonna try to make the molds look like this top little almost rectangle type thing. All right, so my plan here is for me to have little marshmallow legs and I think this size will be perfect. So I'm just gonna make a whole bunch more right now. As I'm making these, I feel like it is worth mentioning that these little pops are slightly smaller than what I would say a typical cake pop is. And that's only because I want to be as proportional as possible with the marshmallows. But you could go ahead and use like really large marshmallows and make jumbo cake pops or maybe use some other type of candy that resembles the legs of the little Among Us characters and make a cake pop that is slightly larger than this and more, you know, about the size of a normal cake pop. But I feel like that's worth mentioning since these are kind of, you know, smaller than most cake pops. Okay guys, so this is a motherhood channel. It's not a professional baking channel and I have been struggling here. I've been trying to make like a white chocolate like for my dipping of the sticks and I failed twice. I have tried it on the stove with shortening and heavy whipping cream and it has become like a play-doh. I have tried microwaving it in the micro well, microwaving it in the microwave. I've been cooking in the microwave and again same weird play-doh consistency. I know that white chocolate is more difficult and I didn't have the little white melting chocolates that they sell in the store so I knew I was gonna maybe struggle a little bit, but I didn't know that I was gonna struggle this much. So, long story short, I am going to be microwaving one part heavy whipping cream, five parts uh, semi-sweet chocolate, which I know will turn out to be more of like a ganache and you know, the consistency that I was hoping the white chocolate would be. And that is how I'm going to assemble my little cake pops and then pop them in the fridge and tomorrow I will go shopping and buy those melting chocolates for the final dip. So this is gonna be a two day event, but let's assemble these guys and hopefully I won't have some weird glitch with my chocolate. So I'm just gonna microwave the heavy whipping cream and then pour it on top of my little chocolate chips here, which I have in a piping bag so that I can uh, dip the sticks in. And then once I need to assemble my marshmallows, I can take this out and it won't you know, dirty up the glass. So that's why I have it like that. Looks like we might need a little bit more heavy whipping cream. So now this is going to be one part cream, two parts chocolate chips. And a typical ganache calls for equal parts of both the chocolate and the cream, but I wanted something slightly more firm than that. So that's why I'm doing less cream in here, but I know that I can always add even more cream if I really need it, but I'm hoping that this comes out okay. I'm not feeling too many random chocolate chips, so I feel like it did a pretty good job melting everything down. So I'm gonna let this just cool down just a little bit to thicken up, and then we'll be ready for dipping. All right, we've got like a nice fudgy consistency here, so I think this is ready, and hopefully I won't regret this decision in the morning. I think it's probably the best one I made tonight. Okay, so based on how this is going, I see this as being a two-part assembly. I am going to let this firm up in the freezer before I then attach the marshmallows because I think the chocolate is still too warm and I'd rather have it firm up immediately when I put it on my little cake pops here. So let me do the other ones and then I will get back with the next step. All right, we got these guys out of the freezer. I am gonna cut off the tiniest little tip on my plastic baggie here so that I can attach my marshmallows. And I am going to do that, hopefully easily. Okay. 
I'm gonna put like two little dots there. And put my marshmallows on like this. And I do want a little bit of a gap. I'm hoping that they'll resemble legs when we finally dip them in the other chocolate. And I will be attaching one more marshmallow in just a bit, but let me get these legs done. Okay, we are on the last step of the night before these guys permanently go in the freezer until tomorrow when I buy the candy melts. I went ahead and cut little marshmallows vertically down the center and we have these guys and this is going to serve as like the little backpack so when we dip it this whole thing is going to be like green or red or whatever color I'm able to buy so I think I might just be able to stick it on but I'm going to probably use some of my ganache for a little bit of extra hold but I think again the sizing is like perfect for how the little Among Us character actually looks. So here we go. Let's put a little bit of ganache. And then stick this little guy on. And I'm hoping that in the morning, this will all be like super solid. Right now the ganache is still a little creamy. It's kind of stuck to the parchment paper in some places. So I'm hoping that as the night goes on and it's been in the freezer longer, it will firm up even more. And when we dip this, nothing will fall off. Alrighty, we got my frozen little cake out of the freezer. I'm gonna unwrap it and then cut it in two slices. And again, I did this just to make cutting it in half this way a little bit easier since this was a very fluffy cake. I didn't want to totally ruin it. <laughs> so there we go. Doesn't quite look like the Among Us character, but hopefully after a little bit of decoration, it will turn out great. I am going to kind of trim down the legs a little bit so that they are more distinguished though. Again, this is also why I spaced out the toothpicks the way that I did so that if I trim them down, it actually comes out to be the design that I was going for. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and put our bottom layer on my little portable plate and let's put some frosting on the bottom just so it kind of holds its place as I decorate it later on and then give it a good coat of frosting for the middle layer and then we'll go ahead and put this top layer on and I already can tell like it's starting to defrost so you got to work quick and if we need to freeze this up I will do it again let's do a little crumb coat on this bad boy this was Definitely more difficult than I was hoping it would be. Uh, the cake is just super crumbly because it is so fluffy and moist. So I did my best with a crumb coat. As you can see, this leg kind of got torn up. But from the top, after I coat it with like a drip and decorate it, I think it will look like an Among Us character. So all hope is not lost. What I am gonna do is put a little bit of a ganache where I want some details to be and we'll kind of go from there. All right, here you can kind of see what I'm going for and I'm really hoping that the drip tomorrow turns out even better than this. Alrighty friends, now that the little mini Among Us cake is put away and the legs and the little backpack marshmallows are put on my cake pops, I cleaned up, I made a total mess, I'm ready to go to bed. But after cleaning up, I realized that I still had a little bit of chocolate frosting left. I didn't use it all on the little mini Among Us cake. And tomorrow I have an idea for how I'm gonna decorate it. So I wasn't planning on using the rest of that frosting and the cake pop dough, I might've put even too much in there to be honest, but I think it'll turn out fine. Um, anyways, I had a little bit left over and I was like, oh, I've been dying to try the TikTok fudge, but with chocolate frosting. If you guys saw one of my previous videos, I tried it with the vanilla frosting and it was so good. So I decided to make a tiny, tiny little bit of chocolate peanut butter fudge using that same technique, one-to-one -one ratio and all. And I'm just gonna lick the spatula now just for the taste test. Uh, I hope I didn't overcook it in the microwave because there was just so little of it, but we're gonna, you know, not let anything go to waste. This tastes like a Reese's. Yeah, I'm trying like, I'm trying to imagine like letting like a Reese's just kind of melt in my mouth. 
and this tastes just like it. Well, this will be fun to eat tomorrow. But enough chit chat, it is 1.43 a.m. I just have a few more things to clean up around here and then I'm gonna go to bed. In the morning, I will run to the store and get those candy melts that I wish I had tonight. I really, I'm really bummed that it didn't work out. I, I don't know, there's a part of me that's like, when you guys see my recipe videos, I bet you want it just to be all perfect all the way through. And I guess here's an example of, I'm not a perfect baker, I'm not a professional, but I am a perfectionist. <laughs> and if something doesn't go right, I find a way to fix it and make it turn out as close to what I want it to be, you know? So here's a perfect example of non-perfect Emily. I don't know, maybe someday I'll, I'll talk more about my perfectionism and how that affected my schoolwork and just my outlook on life and how I kind of defeated that in my grad school program. So uh, let me know in the comments if you guys wanna hear more about that. But yeah, I'm not perfect. And hopefully these things will at least come out close to perfect because I, in my head, you know, they're just so good. Now I'm getting tired. Enough chit chat, I'm going to bed. Good night, I'll see you soon. Hey guys, okay, I'm back. Went to Michael's this morning, picked up a couple things. So let me show you. I got these dark green little candy melts. And then I also picked up some white ones so that if I need more, I can always dye them or do a swirl or just have them on hand for the next time I want cake pops. And then we couldn't resist because I went with Juan and Aubrey. <laughs> we got these cute little silicone molds that look like pizza, hamburgers, and little French fries. And I was even thinking like, hey, that would kind of be cool if I made a little pizza topper because I think some of the Among Us characters have like pizza on their head. So I might be able to use that. I did have a coupon for like 20% off the entire purchase, which was awesome. So that saved me $2.39. I paid just under $10 for all that stuff. So the white and green candy melts were originally $3.49 and they come out to $2.80 after the 20% off. So you know, not too bad. So I'm ready to get decorating. The first thing that I'm gonna do is go ahead and melt these in a little like tall cup so that I can easily dip my little guys in. But the instructions on these are to just put in a microwavable safe container, microwave at 50% power for one minute and then 30 second intervals of regular power until it's fully melted. And it does say do not overheat, which is probably what I did with the other chocolate last night. I know it's not the exact same thing, but if you overheat it, you add some vegetable shortening and uh, kind of mix it in. And it says, do not refrigerate or freeze, which is interesting, which means after these guys are dipped, I probably don't have to do anything. Now my cake pops are in the freezer, so I'm hoping that once I dip them into this warm chocolate, it will cool the chocolate really quick. And that way I can then just set it down on parchment paper and not really leave like the back all, you know, mushy or whatever. It's nice when it, just fully drips off and, and cools in a nice smooth way, but no one really cares about the back. They all care about the front anyway, so it's not the end of the world. So let's go ahead and heat these up. Um, okay, how cute is this? I'm so excited. They're turning out so much better. I am ending up like scraping off the back, but honestly, I don't think it really matters. I'm not gonna be like there trying to get the perfect, you know, smooth surface on everything. Everyone's just gonna be looking at the front anyways, but like, I'm so happy. I wanna show you guys my plan. Like, I'm pretty sure that this is turning out exactly how I imagined it. The last thing that we are going to do is cut a little mini marshmallow in half, like lengthwise, and then just stick it on and it's gonna be the little like face mask. So let's do that and oh, I'm so excited. I promise cake pops. I didn't promise mediocre cake pops. So I'm hoping my niece will be ecstatic.
Okay, so I had this little frozen uh, rectangle of ganache and I just dipped it in the white chocolate and now I'm gonna attach it onto this cake that I did the little drip on. Uh, I just kind of poured the hot melting chocolate over it and let it drip down the sides and used a little edible marker to just kind of make a little outline, although I can't say that it is as like works as good as I was hoping. I wasn't sure how that marker was gonna work, but on the melting chocolate, it didn't work that great. Not the end of the world. Okay, so I'm just attaching the little mask now for the Among Us guy, and hopefully scraping this off without making too much of a mess. So now I got my little Among Us cake for my niece. It's a two layer cake with the chocolate frosting. Uh, like I said, I just did a little drip. I thought that that would kind of have like a fun little look and I could always break it off and transfer it for like a cleaner look here, but I don't think she's really gonna care. I think she's gonna like it. So there we go on that. And then you guys, I am in love with these cake pops. They turned out so good. Like I said, the back is scraped, but I think the front is adorable. I love the little marshmallows on the front and getting these little meltable chocolates from Michael's was the way to go. If you wanna be even more extra and you're very fancy with like, or very careful with like royal icing piping or whatever, you could outline around the marshmallow with like black icing and then do like a little design for the A Little Among Us character. But honestly, I think that this is good enough and I think it's very clear what it is without that outline. I'd like to thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you guys are new. I would love to have you stick around and check out all of my motherhood content. I think what I am gonna do is actually just do a simple like tutorial video with using the same footage, uh, but just like step by step and a little voiceover in case you want to refer back to this recipe and really see how I did without seeing all of the downsides and fails as well. If you are throwing an Among Us party, I wish you the best of luck and I will catch you guys in the next one. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna show you mommy. Okay, say turn it on. Uh, turn it on. <gasps> no, it's safe. It's safe? <laughs> okay. end of the video. If you didn't know already, every Monday and Friday you can find motherhood and lifestyle content on this channel. And since us moms have to do it all, that may mean yummy recipes, easy DIYs, mom hacks, cleaning and organization, or just a combo of everything. Please know that you are loved and you are made for greatness, and I will catch you in the next one.